All right, you guys, this next myth is going to be insane. What is it? That's it. The Hwacha. It's an ancient Korean weapon. Huh? If there's a picture of it, that means it's not a myth. It exists. Well, we know it exists. What we're going to test is the legend of the Hwacha, whether or not it could do what they said it could do. Apparently, they could fire 200 arrows all at once, going 500 yards, and all of the arrows explode on impact. Okay, well, to begin with, any weapon in that era wouldn't have had the benefit of modern explosives or propellants. It was likely based entirely on black powder. So first we need to find out if black powder can actually propel one of those arrows 500 yards. Right, and then we need to see if we can get these rockets to explode on impact. And finally, we need to see if we can launch 200 arrows simultaneously without them all crashing into each other or exploding on the stand. It's a massive myth to unravel with three key parts. One, can a fire arrow actually travel 500 yards? Two, can it be rigged to explode on impact? And three, can you really set off 200 at once? So let's start up at the pointy end. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to build one of these arrows from the materials that the ancient uh, Koreans would have used. Uh, I have some bamboo. I have some feathers for my fletching. And finally, a piece of steel to make my arrowheads out of. Tori proves himself a first-class Fletcher and a pretty fair blacksmith. All right, so my arrow's done. Now it's time to see how it flies. Watch out! Pretty dang good. That's one down, 199 to go. Tori leaves the hard work to Karen as he and Grant skip town to visit Zambelli Fireworks in Pennsylvania. We're lost, aren't we? The rationale behind the road trip is that the fire arrows work just like skyrockets. Happen to have some fun while we're here? That's purely coincidental. Just like fireworks, the Watcha rockets were charged with black powder. Ours have to travel 500 yards strapped to a four and a half foot out. Grant and Tori are determined to roll their own, and Bill is here to help them. Well, let's see, what's one of these weigh? Well, about four ounces. That's not bad. Every, every 12 ounces the shell weighs, we add one ounce of lift to lift it up in the air. You know, if you guys want to go five, 500 yards, that's a long way, so we'll see how a two ounce rocket works. Using six-inch cardboard tubes, Bill shows how to pack a charge without blowing up the bunker. And so you do a little bit at a time, and you, you put you the rods down, that. and and you just give it a couple hits. It feels wrong. <laughs> Don't hit it too hard, man. Right, I'd hate to see you blow your hand off. Good. Okay. Nice. Nice. <laughs> hey. Grant and Tori make several versions. Some with more black powder, and some with less. The rockets are wrapped in paper, then Bill adds the fuse. And when we go to fire, you we'll cut this paper and peel it back. And give yourself five, five or six seconds to walk away. Okay. You ready? Yeah, let's see what these bad boys can do. Oh! This is perfect! I mean, can't you just imagine an invading army coming out of that forest? Totally. All right, so we need to see if these arrows can fly 500 yards, so we should walk it out. They're here to test part one of the myth, that a rocket arrow really could make the distance. But 500 yards is a long, long way. This is how all horror movies start. <laughs> Didn't that guy say stick to the path? This is gonna be perfect. We're right at the tree line. The crop ends smack bang on the 500 yard mark. They tape the target halfway up a tree so they can see it from the launch site. At this point, I think we're just going for distance rather than aim. But if I were to take a guess to see whether the arrow would hit him, I'd have to say we probably wouldn't. But then again, the watcher had 200 arrows.